Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Real Estate Talk. I'm your host, Dave Pouch of REMAX Integrity. We're live this Thursday morning from the Albany studios of KGAL K-Show Radio at the old library building, the home of Silver Falls Dermatology. So, first question of the day is just a little bit after 11 o'clock. Are you hungry? It's almost lunchtime. If you're hungry, you want to taste on us. That's a $10 Quiznos gift certificate for the first person this hour to email dave at kgal.com and mention taste on us. That's a Quiznos certificate for the Albany Quiznos store. And that's dave at kgal.com. I got another good deal for you today. And this is today only. This is for Thursday, December 6th only. So if you're listening to the Saturday show or any rebroadcast of this show, it doesn't apply. Uh, there is a performance this Saturday night, uh, Yuletide with the Pops, and it features vocalist Julie Hittner Young. This is a joyful celebration conducted by Pops Director Emeritus Larry Harrington. It is on Saturday, December 8th at 7.30 at the historic Elsinore Theater in Salem. And we are giving away today two tickets to that concert. Uh, If you are interested in those tickets, again, email dave at kgal.com. The first email that that hits Dave's uh, Email will be the recipient of those tickets. So uh, good luck and, and get on that. If you would like your copies of the National Association of Realtors Guides for Buyer or Guide for Sellers, uh, I have them available. I have them electronically, and I'm happy to share. Uh, I just ask that you do two things. First, like Real Estate Talk on Facebook. That's facebook.com backslash Real Estate Talk on KGAL. If you've already liked the show there, or if you don't have a Facebook account, then simply email me at realestatetalk at kgal.com. And I do need you to email me because they are relatively large PDF files, and I want to send them to you by email. So I need your email address so that I can email you back. Uh, Again, if you're not on Facebook, just email me, and I would be happy to send them to you. I have just one home in the showcase today, and this home is really all about the shop. And I've got a number of buyers right now that I'm working with that are all really focused on having a very cool shop. And ladies and gentlemen, this is probably one of the three coolest shops that I have ever seen. I don't care if you're a woodworker, if you work on cars, uh, if you just want to park your various big toys, but you can do it here. It has a 16-foot door. It's fitted with 110 and 220 power service. It is piped for air, compressed air. Uh, It'll hold two semi-truck cabs. It is a big, big shop. Really nicely. Well done. Off the back of that shop is a full bath. There's an additional storage building behind it. Uh, If you wanted to start a car repair business or an auto body shop, frankly, this would be the first place I would look. And I don't know, I haven't checked with planning and, and zoning if you can, but in terms of the shop, it's awesome. Now... I want to talk about the house a little bit, too. Just about 1,400 square feet, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. It has beautiful hardwood floors, updated appliances, and an attached one-car garage, all on a very private and secluded and very nice .62-acre lot. There's also a small studio building for kids to play. Uh, You could use it as an art studio. It's just It has it all. And the price tag, just $284,000. It's located in Crabtree. And if you want more information, the MLS is 646724. Or you can email me directly here. So again, just that one home in the showcase today. And that's the Real Estate Showcase for this sixth day of December 2012. If you want any more information on our participating home, if you would like to see your home highlighted in the Real Estate Showcase, just send me an email at realestatetalk at kgal.com and we can talk about it. If you have a question, send that in by email or you can also do that on our Facebook fan page. That's what we're doing today, folks. We're going to do listener questions today. Uh, Some of these have come in by email, some of these by phone, actually. Uh, And I got some really good questions for you today. We're going to talk a little bit about listing your home here over the holidays. We're going to talk about multiple offer situations. I got a really good question about buying a home by the freeway and road noise that I want to, I'm really looking forward to talking about here in the next couple of segments. Uh, Let's see. If you're not currently working with a real estate professional and you would like a market analysis done on your property, and I can't 
emphasize enough how important it is to get a really good market analysis done. It is an important piece of information. It looks at, when I do a market analysis, for example, I look at the sold comparables that are similar in character to the property in question. I also look at, once I get an initial price range, the sold and active competition for that property. Because marketing your home for sale is about product placement. It's about how you compare against the other properties in your area when you're listing a home for sale. Now, when you're purchasing a home, it's important to have a market analysis done as well because you want to build a successful negotiation strategy to get the best deal. And knowing what the best deal look like looks like is a direct result of having good knowledge about the market, what else is available out there, how it compares, and having that knowledge arms you to make a good decision and develop a good strategy. So market analysis is a great tool for both buyers and sellers, and I am happy to provide that tool to you at no obligation. Just send me the address by email to realestatetalk at kgal.com, and I will get that market analysis done and get it to you. Ultimately, you know, I am a part-time radio host, I am a full-time real estate professional, and I would like to be on your team. If you're looking for an agent that's 100% on your side, I am committed to working with only one client in any real estate negotiation. Uh, in, in fact, I, I had a discussion with some clients just yesterday, kind of a unique situation. The, the sellers contacted me uh, wanting to talk about selling their house. Well, in fact, this house may be just exactly right for some buyers that I have been working with for some period of time. Now, it would be absolutely, perfectly legal, ethical, legitimate for me to have earned a full commission for representing both the buyer and the seller in that transaction. But what I chose to do is to give the sellers the option of being a for sale by owner, or being represented by a different agent, or at least having another independent third agent come in and help them with the market analysis piece. Uh, because again, I don't do dual agency. I am a, uh, an agent that's committed to working 100% on the side of the one client that I'm dealing with. So it costs me money. Certainly, I, I gave up or will be giving up some commission income potential by doing that. But it is so much more important that I like the guy that I look at in the mirror and that I sleep well at night. So that's the commitment that I make to all my clients. If you're looking for a real estate agent, that's the commitment I will make to you. If you're just now starting the home buying process, I cannot encourage you enough to stop by Willamette Neighborhood Housing Services, sign up, take their home buyer education class. It is a full day well spent and it will arm you with some excellent information to get started in the home buying process. If you are hearing about Willamette Neighborhood Housing from Real Estate Talk, if you are a listener of this show, if you are not currently working with another real estate agent, I would be happy to pay that tuition for you. I believe it is just that important, just that powerful, and I am happy to do that. I do offer that to my clients, and I will offer that to you, listeners here on Real Estate Talk. Okay, I'm Dave Pouch of Remax Integrity. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will be doing listener questions. I got some good ones for you today, so stay tuned. Tis the season and time for planning holiday parties and memorable company celebrations. Be sure to include Mama's Fine Italian in your plans. Have the party at Mama's in Lebanon or book them to cater your event. Either way, it will be superb and your guests will love it. Need a special bottle of wine for dinner tonight or for a party hostess gift? No better place or price than Mama's incomparable wine shop. Close Sunday and Monday, so make the most of the other five days and join your friends at Mama's. Like them on Facebook or contact them through their website, mamasfineitalian.com. Call for reservations or to plan your holiday party. 541-451-5050. That's 451-5050. Mama's Fine Italian and Wine Shop on West Oak between Main and 2nd in Lebanon. Across from the big blue Napa Auto Parts building. Banking these days can be pretty impersonal. You've got your big banks, your internet banks, your do-it-yourself banks, and your too-big-to-fail banks. That's why you might be interested in an alternative. Willamette Community Bank. 
You deserve better service without sacrificing a thing. So if you're feeling underserved, make the switch to the best banking option out there. With branches in Albany and Lebanon, Willamette Community Bank. Service like no other, we promise. Member FDIC. This is an astounding story of courage and endurance, unparalleled in the history of shipwrecks. Now showing at Carmike 12. No! Go away! Based on the beloved bestseller, two unlikely castaways. You have to trust me. One incredible journey home. From Academy Award winning director Ang Lee, Life of Pi. Now showing at Carmike 12. In 3D. Been invaded. What am I supposed to do? I'm gonna fight. Now showing at Carmike 12, Red Dawn. When you're fighting in your own backyard, you're fighting for your family. For them, this is just some place. For us, this is our home. Now showing at Carmike 12, Red Dawn. Rated PG 13. Did you know there are about 1 million pellet stoves and inserts in the United States and Canada? Yet just over 80 mills throughout North America to supply them. One of the best is in our own backyard, right there in Mill City. Pack saddle pellets from Frank Lumber. Made from 100% Douglas fir, pack saddle pellets are now at Economy Supply Building Center. Pack saddle pellets have no chemical additives and provide consistent, clean burning heat at an Economy Supply price you'll love. Economy Supply Building Center, where Highway 34 meets Tangent Street in Lebanon. Radio for the Mid-Valley's Horse Lovers, The Horse Show with Rick Lamb. Sunday mornings at 9 on Smart Talk 1580. Welcome back to Real Estate Talk. I'm Dave Pouch of REMAX Integrity. Real Estate Talk is your only resource on local radio for real estate information right here in the mid Willamette Valley. We're always here on Saturdays, but we get to spend a couple of Thursdays a month like today here in the Valley Talk time slot. If you've missed a show, if you're looking for information about real estate market trends, go to the website www.kgal.com and click on the link for Real Estate Talk past shows there. Uh, there are some missing files, although we're starting to do it on YouTube now, and those YouTube videos, oh, they're not videos, they're they're technically videos because I got a picture, but their audio files are being posted uh, on the Facebook fan page as well. Uh, so today's a day about listener questions, and it's actually one of my favorite segments to do uh, is, is take the listener questions and get them answered here on the air. Well, How's the market is the most common question I get, and I'm asked that just about every single day. Uh, I go to a rotary meeting, somebody asks me, how's the market? I'm wearing my name tag out at uh, Fred Meyer, and somebody asks me, how's the market? So I'm going to start the day today by giving you just a little bit of perspective on that. Uh, for example, just yesterday, we all in our office got an email from our managing broker saying that our office had closed 40 two transactions in the month of November. Now, that is not quite as high as our biggest month this summer, but it's certainly way over what we have been doing uh, November last year, for example. Uh, so it's, it's busy. From a personal perspective, I can tell you I actually have 11 active buyers that I am currently working with, and I'm trying to find them just the right home in this period of relatively low inventory. So there's lots going on in the real estate market right now, despite the fact that it's December and people would normally expect it slowing down. So let's use that as a lead in to the first question. And this question comes from A in Albany. And A asked me, uh, and this is not the first, first time I've been, I've talked about this particular issue on real estate talk. It seems to come up about once a year in one manner or another. And that is, I'm thinking of listing my house. Uh, should I wait until after the new year or go ahead and put it on the market now? I'm concerned about days on market by having the house on the market over the holidays. So, A, that's a great question. Uh, we do get asked it every year, or I get asked it every year, and conventional wisdom may be that the holidays is not a great time to have your house on the market because there is a noted lack of buyers, and you are absolutely right to be concerned about days on market as it affects your ability to negotiate and your strength of negotiations down the road when you actually do get an offer. But as with so many things in real estate, the answer isn't black and white. There's some gray area. First of all, and as it applies to your situation and your home, are you ready to get on the market? Is your house ready now? 
or nearly ready to put the best foot forward to the consumers, the buyers who are actually out there actively looking for a home. As I mentioned just a moment ago, there are lots of buyers looking and there are significant shortages in inventory. But if your house is not dressed for success, if your house is not putting its best foot forward onto the market, you indeed could be hurting yourself. Uh, in fact, for many sellers, the Christmas season, it's a big plus because many of you are already decorated. The tree is up, the lights around the, the windows, the decorations throughout the house. All of those things at any other time of the year might be considered clutter, but during this season, they are welcoming. They are warming. Uh, and it's, it's a nice thing. Secondly, going to sound like the same question, but it's a little bit different. Are you ready to be on the market? For many sellers, the biggest challenge with having your home listed during the holidays is being able to get it shown, to make it available to see when buyers want to see it. If you have a busy social schedule with lots of family coming in to visit and, and tons of guests staying over and you've got holiday parties and ornament exchange and cookie exchanges and all those things that are going to be at your house and you're going to be, to be in the position of telling buyer's agents who call to make an appointment, oh no, I'm sorry, I can't accommodate a showing today at two. Oh no, tomorrow won't work either. Well, maybe you should reconsider. Uh, you have to be on the market to get your house sold. And if you can't do that, and folks, that's not a judgmental statement. Uh, that's just one for your own self-assessment. Then probably the best advice is to wait. And the final question is, are you ready to be in the market? And that has to do with, are you ready to price your listing effectively for the market that exists? As agents, we talk to our sellers very often about pricing strategies. And despite arguing to the contrary, sometimes we just can't convince sellers that the right price on day one is the best strategy. Sellers want to start at a higher price and then bring it down. They want to be able to negotiate it down later. Well, I don't want to get into that whole issue right now, but I want to focus on the question of, should I list during the holiday season question? If you are not priced right, if you are not in the market that exists in the holiday season with the buyers who are here in the holiday season, then you have to question whether or not you are actually taking advantage of the opportunity that does exist. The bottom line, despite it being the holiday season, it's Christmas, it's Hanukkah, it's New Year's, it's all full of family and social events. Folks, there are buyers who are looking to purchase homes. As a general rule, these are serious buyers who are looking to make a commitment. Why the heck else would they out, be out braving the weather? Why would they be out in the rain plodding through hundreds of houses in this kind of weather? Well, it's kind of nice today, but you know what I mean. Uh, why else would they be out there taking time away from their own family and friends during this season? My follow-up advice here, if you decide that it is not the right time, it's a good decision. In your individual case, it could be a good decision. But start taking the steps that you can to be in the best position you can be by the middle to the end of January to get your house on the market and ready to sell when the traditional season ends and the home buying door opens up again. So Super Bowl Sunday is the line in the sand that I like to draw. Do the things that you have to do over the holiday period. When you're putting away your Christmas lights and decorations, don't bring all that other stuff that you previously had put away to set up for this season. Don't bring it back out. Leave it packed away. Declutter. Clean. Deep clean. Organize. Most of you are cleaning your houses because you got company coming over. Go that extra step. Get it just a little bit extra clean. And then when they leave, finish the cleaning. Get ready. Rearrange the furniture to make the house the best product that you can put on the market. So take advantage of the holiday season. If you're not going to list your house, take advantage of the holiday season to prepare your house and take advantage of the work that you're already doing to prepare your house so that when you want to put it on the market in the middle of January or late January, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to put that best foot forward. Okay, my next question comes from T, also in Albany. Uh, is it true that kitchens and bathrooms sell houses? We're considering a little remodeling before we try to sell the house, and we want to know where to best spend our money. Well, T, yes. There absolutely is some truth in that statement. And it's not the only thing that sell houses. It certainly depends on the buyers, to be sure. But for many buyers, 
especially women, and I don't mean this as a sexist statement, it's just the focus thing, uh, especially women, uh, but not exclusively, the kitchen makes a huge first impression, and a well-designed, well-appointed, beautiful kitchen does offer a wow factor. Similarly, bathrooms, specifically the master bathroom, can offer that same wow factor. Now, for men... Don't misunderstand. Kitchens do still offer a positive impression for men. Yes, that's also true that some men tend to focus on the garage and or the shop and the yard. There is, I think, an underlying question here, uh, T, and I hope I'm getting at the question you're really asking, is where's the best place to spend my money to prepare my home for the market? And I would strongly suggest that you do this. I would strongly suggest that you call a real estate agent that you like and trust. Have them come over and visit with you to discuss the plans that you have and what they think it might take to make your house the most sellable. Now, if you called me, I would probably bring the lovely and talented Margaret Asilia with me to help. Margaret is the owner of Creative Concepts and Contracting. She is the home stager that I use, and she has been a frequent guest here on Real Estate Talk. She has a consultation fee that cost is $100 for an hour or so, and she does a walk and talk. She'll go through the house with you. She will give you tons of wonderful ideas for redecorating, for rearranging furniture, for fixing the minor issues that I guarantee you she she will see even if you have been overlooking them. Uh, she's an excellent resource and a wonderful tool to help you get ready and to help you decide where to focus your dollars. One of the key points I want to make here when we're talking about remodeling, specifically putting big dollars into remodeling, you may not have to remodel completely. You may just have to freshen things up. It depends on how out of date you are. And I like to use the term market qualifiers. There are some things that bring you level with the market uh, that you're going to be competing in. Those are the things that you should invest money in bringing yourself up to market standard because that's going to help you hold your price. If you are below the market standard on the updates in the kitchen or the flooring choices or the paint or the appliances, that's a good place to spend the money to bring you up to the market. To go over what the market standard is, to upgrade vice update, uh, may not always be the best use of your money, depending on what your resources are. It, it may get you a little more money. More likely, in our current environment, it will help your home sell first. It will help, help your home sell faster, but it may not necessarily help you sell for more dollars uh, the things that tend to make a house sell for more dollars are things that you really can't do anything about. They are location. They are backing up to green spaces. They are, does it have a third car garage already? Uh, so those types of things you can't really address. Be wise on how you're going to invest your money. And I would call in some experts to talk about your plans. Because the single worst thing you can do is to over-improve your home for the area and the neighborhood. You know, you have a $160,000 home, putting $50,000 in redesign and upgrades may not make it a $210,000 home. With most remodeling projects, you are not going to get back 100 plus percent of the investment in the remodel. So keep that in mind. And again, working with experts, working with a real estate professional you like and trust, working with an interior designer or a home stager like Margaret from Creative Concepts that you like and trust is probably the best piece of advice that I can give. Okay, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, more listener questions. You're listening to Real Estate Talk on KGO. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by the Exogen Temporal Scanner Thermometer, changing the way the world takes temperature. This is Charles Osgood. When my sister and I were little kids, we used to love being taken to the shoe store. We thought it was great fun because shoe stores used to have an x-ray machine that would let you see your toes wiggle within a pair of shoes. By the time my own kids were trying on new shoes, they didn't do that anymore because radiation exposure has long since been linked to increased risk of cancer. I mention that because of something our CBS News colleague, Benita Nyer, will tell you about. A study in the journal Pediatrics finds the number of children who have undergone diagnostic imaging scans, including x-rays, MRIs, CT scans, and ultrasounds, has increased significantly over the past nine years. Higher radiation procedures like CT scans rose 34% during the study. 
More on the study and what parents should do about it after this. Sometimes the simplest things make the biggest difference. When our kids were little and got sick, taking their temperatures was always a hassle. And half the time they wouldn't or couldn't cooperate. But today, with the Exogen Temporal Scanner, all it takes for parents is a simple swipe of the forehead and you've got an accurate reading every single time. That's why medical professionals use the Exogen Temporal Scanner, changing the way the world takes temperature. Available at Walgreens and other fine retailers. In this moment, who has your back? Do you know the name of your insurance agent? Does your agent know your name? Or would you call a 1-800 number that connects you with who? Another state? Another country? Get a local, independent insurance agent with auto owner's insurance. Someone you can call when bad stuff happens to your car, home, or business. In this moment, get an agent who will protect you in that moment. Auto owner's insurance. The no problem, people. In Raleigh, call Anders, Ireland, and Marshall at 919-755-1401. Benita and I was telling us about the new study finding that more and more kids are being subjected to more and more radiation these days. Nobody's saying children should never be given x-rays or other diagnostic imaging scans. Unfortunately, a lot of times children have to have x-rays to find out exactly what's wrong. Grace Hickson's great-grandson, Andre, had his first x-ray when he was just one and a half years old. He couldn't breathe, and I took him to another doctor, took x-ray, and that's when they told me he had pneumonia. Hickson says she was aware of the radiation risk, but felt the test needed to be done. A little radiation here and a little there can add up, though, Anita. Health experts say parents should question their child's doctor before agreeing to any scan. Ask them, well, how much radiation does that involve? And is the test really necessary? Pediatrician Dr. Jessica Sessions. Here's why, she says. Children are all growing, so their cells are rapidly replicating, and so that means they're more at risk for radiation than an adult. The Osgood File. Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. The Customs of Christmas. As a custom of Christmas, candles glow in homes across the land. Do you know why we light our Christmas holidays with candles? I'll tell you in a moment. It's that time of year when families gather and stories are told. A time when memories are made for the next generation. Hi, I'm James Dufour. And I'm Crystal Dufour with Awesome Dufour Funeral Home. We just want to take a moment to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. May you enjoy your time together and create memories that will last forever. From our family to yours, have a very Merry Christmas from Awesome Dufour Funeral Home in Albany. A custom of Christmas, candles. The origin of candles can be traced to the Scandinavian Festival of Light, but they've come to have an even more significant meaning during the Christmas season. Certainly, they're a symbol of Christ, the light of the world. Long ago, it was believed that the Christ child returned to wander the earth on Christmas Eve, and so those who loved him, hoping that he might find their homes, placed lighted candles in their windows. And today, we continue to light our holidays with candles, one of the oldest customs of Christmas. Beyond the Beltway with Bruce Dumont. Sunday afternoons on News Talk 1580 KGAL. Welcome back to Real Estate Talk. I'm Dave Pouch of REMAX Integrity. Today we're doing some listener questions uh, from K&A in Albany. We're considering buying a home in a neighborhood that is right next to I-5. In fact, the cul-de-sac literally backs up to the freeway. The noise doesn't really bother us, but our real estate agent says it's something we should really think about. What do you think? Well, I think your real estate agent has a valid point, depending on why he or she is bringing it up. Certainly, every community has houses that are going to be close to noisy streets and freeways. Fact of life. They sell people live in them, I would hazard a guess that by and large, freeway noise is something that you probably get used to and the impact of it may diminish over time. It's one of those things that you hear it today, you hear a little less tomorrow and in about three weeks you don't hear it at all. So consider the noise levels, if you will, inside the house versus outside the house. Is it quiet in the house? And pay attention, listen specifically for it. In most newer construction homes, you're going to find the quality of the insulation, the quality of construction, the windows, all provide excellent soundproofing, and you may hardly notice or not even notice at all the noise from the freeway when you're 
inside the house. But outside, well, if there isn't much between you and the freeway, then that's something that may not be fixable. Landscaping can help to some extent. Where you are in relation to that fence, if there's another house or something that may go up in between you and the fence, or in the freeway, rather, uh, something to consider. The question, though, is how much time do you spend outside? If you're an outside person, if you'd like to entertain in your yard, if you'd like to barbecue and be out there, is that going to bother you? Think it through. The, the reason that your agent is very likely concerned, I'm going to suppose, is that A... They want you to be happy, and they want to make sure that you know what you're getting into. And asking you to seriously think about it is their way of getting you to process it. And it's also, to be frank, uh, giving them as an agent an out later, so that when you say it's their fault for not pointing it out, they can say, nope, I did. Remember, we talked about it. Uh, it also has to do with what I like to think of as the mercenary spirit within all of us in the real estate profession. When I help a buyer to buy a home, I want them to think not only as a buyer, but as a seller. Frankly, I know people stay in their homes between five and seven years on average, and I'd like to help them sell that house down the road when they're ready. I don't want them to buy a house. It's going to be hard for me to sell later on. Uh, now, I'm only really half serious, but it is true. As a buyer, you should be thinking like a seller. Just because you don't have children doesn't mean you shouldn't pay attention to school districts. Uh, just because you only need one bedroom doesn't mean you won't need more eventually, or that a one-bedroom house or a two-bedroom house may not be as marketable as a three- or a four-bedroom house. You should be shopping with at least a passing thought to the long view of home ownership and eventually to your way out to selling it. For that reason, you really do need to process the impact of that road noise on the location. How is it going to affect you later? How could it affect the ultimate sale of your home? And what can you do to mitigate or reduce the impact of that? Should it make your mind up for you one way or the other? No, probably not. But please do consider it in full before you make a decision. And I believe that's what your agent was trying to get you to do. Jay in Lebanon emailed this question in. Jay writes, we have an agent we're starting to work with to find a home. He's always trying to get us to ride in his car to go look at houses. We prefer to drive separately so we can talk about the houses in private. We like the agent, but this is starting to become an issue. Well, I feel like I'm on Dear Abby here instead of real estate talk, but... Jay, I will tell you very frankly, I prefer to ride in the same car with my clients as well. And I actually do press to do that. Uh, and I do it for exactly the same reason that you've mentioned. To be able to talk about the houses that we're visiting and the houses that we're going to visit. I learn a lot about my clients' wants and needs, about their priorities and their personalities during the drives in between showings. I also offer to drive because... Gas is expensive, and I figure, you know, I'm the one getting paid here. Use my gas. I also want to give my clients an opportunity to get to know me as a person. As a realtor, it's, it's really hard to have just a callous business relationship with your clients. You spend a lot of time together. You work through a lot of problems together. Things can be very, very stressful, and you're making big decisions. You want to have at least I do, uh, I want to have some sign of, of a good relationship with my clients. And it's also a business relationship, but sometimes it is a personal or personalized relationship. I think that's important because as I always say on this show, you want to be working with an agent that you like and trust. So if you're not comfortable talking about the houses in front of the agent that you're working with, if you're not comfortable traveling in the same car with him, that raises a bigger question for me. Is this really the right agent, the right person for you to be working with? Do you trust him? And, and I, I, I don't mean in terms of him hurting you. I mean in terms of him being on your side and working for you. Okay. I would ask you to consider spending some time with him in the next time you're out house hunting and answer that question for yourself. Ultimately, if you don't trust him, you may need to find another agent, but I really would encourage you to give them a chance first. Now, on this same theme, if you will indulge, indulge me for a minute or two, I want to talk about the concept of agency. 
when you hire a real estate professional, either as a buyer or as a seller, you are creating an agency relationship with him or her. That means they now have fiduciary duties and responsibilities, obligations to you. They are now, in fact, your agent. Information you tell them is confidential. They have to act in your best interest. You will, uh, or at least you should be able to discuss your financial situations with them, confident that it's staying between you and them. You have to trust that they're going to fulfill those duties and responsibilities to you. Many people think of real estate as a sales career. And and ultimately, I'm wondering if that's not what the issue is here. You're afraid that the agent is going to be selling you on houses uh, while you're in the car in between, talking about you know trying to get you to make an offer on a house when you don't want to. Uh, they're not. Really, a good agent isn't there to sell you something. They are there to help you make a good decision. Their job is to help you find homes that meet your criteria. And, and a quick note about that. Your criteria can be something that you can write down and quantify and qualify and say, I want this, 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 and this. But in many cases, as I have talked about here on the show, what you really want may come out in discussions, and it's really nothing like you say you want. Not because you're, you're misleading, but because sometimes you don't know it until you see it, or what you're asking for in a house is not a condition of the house. It's, a, it's some other need is being met. I have clients who are asking for acreage when in fact what they really want is privacy. And you can sometimes get privacy without the yard work of acreage. So listening to my clients and getting to know them helps me to sift through that myself. Again, my job is to help you find homes that meet your criteria, provide you access to those homes, help you to evaluate those homes in relation to your criteria, your wants and needs, and then when you found the right home to help you offer, negotiate, and ultimately navigate and close that transaction and get the keys in your hand. I personally never try to talk my clients into or out of anything. Um, okay, that's not 100% true. There are times when I have tried to talk my clients out of a house that they were falling in love with, falling in love with, that just scared me to death. And I may not have been trying to talk them out of it, but I was trying to make sure they knew everything that I could see that was wrong with it so that they could factor it into their decision. But at the end of the day, folks, it's their in this case, your decision. I just want to make sure I'm doing everything I can to help you make a good decision. And I believe that's what the agent that you're talking about is trying to gain as well. So again, I would encourage you to give them a chance, spend the time in the car with them talking about houses, let them get to know what your preferences are, what your priorities are, uh, and get to know you a little bit and they'll probably be able to help you more effectively. But at the end of the day, if you have a trust issue, uh, if you don't feel like they're on your side helping you, then maybe the best thing you can do is find a new agent. From B in Albany, Dave, I read an article in the paper this morning that said Albany is the sixth most affordable housing market in Oregon. What are your thoughts? Well, B, thank you. I did. I read that article as well. Uh, it referenced uh, a survey conducted by another national real estate franchise, and it was based on the average sale price of a four-bedroom, two-bath home. There was a reference. It was a national survey that was done, and it broke it down into different individualized markets. Uh, here in Oregon, it talked about uh, other states as well, but here in Oregon, Albany ranked number six in terms of affordability, the most expensive uh, was Lake Oswego, and Pendleton was the least expensive in that survey. Uh, I certainly think it reflects some good news for Albany. We are in an affordable housing market. The best point made by the local broker that they interviewed, and if you read the article, uh, and I don't want to, I don't want to say names here on the air, uh, is someone that I think very highly of, and I admire quite a bit. She's a very good friend of mine. Uh, the best point that she made, and again, I think very highly, was that inventory and the economy are huge factors which are going to have an impact in the coming year. But she was generally right, and rightly so, in my opinion, optimistic about where things are going. It's interesting. I received an offer a few days ago on one of my listings, and the offer was a low ball, and that's fine. Uh, 
But the agent made a statement in the email when he sent the offer over that he tried to justify that low offer with the statement that, well, the bad economy and the poor housing numbers in Albany and Corvallis, dot, dot, dot. Uh, I almost spit a mouthful of coffee all over my computer screen when I read it because it obviously reflected either... Uh, an expectation that I didn't know the market or that he didn't know the market. And I'm not sure which one it was. Could have been a negotiating tactic. Uh, I'm not saying we have a booming economy at the moment here in the Valley. I'm a realtor. I'm not an economist. But I can say with absolute certainty that he was way off target with regard to the housing numbers. In fact, in the price category that this listing is in, there is less than four months of inventory on the market. 34 homes on the market, 28 sold in the last 90 days. I responded to his email, thanked him for the offer, and uh, sent him a copy of the latest market update from Real Estate Talk, letting him know that my seller and I will certainly be sending over a counter. So, we'll see what happens. You just never know. Uh, but it's important that you know the numbers. It's important that you pay attention to what the numbers are. And I think there is room for optimism in, in, in our market here locally. We'll do the market update here in just a couple of minutes after the next break. But the numbers are solid. And as, as we're coming into the end of the year, as we're going into the holiday period, uh, pending sales, sales going into, into contract or active under contract listings, uh, the numbers are actually up in many, many cases. Months of inventory is down in most price categories. There are still some troublesome price categories to be sure. Uh, how, homes that are well priced and well conditioned and well priced for their condition do sell reasonably well in our market right now. So affordable, yeah, the median sale price in Albany is uh, in the 150s. Uh, and again, I'll give you the specific na number here in just a little bit. Uh, and that's a pretty affordable number. It's actually below the national average. I remember when I first started doing this show, I looked at the affordability numbers, that median sale price, and Albany seemed to track pretty much right with the national average. I think we are now slightly below the national average, which speaks to our affordability. It speaks to the ability of young homeowners, young home buyers to get into the market and get a good deal. It's a tough market for sellers, but every market's good for somebody and not as good for somebody else. So that's the way the cookie crumbles, folks. Okay, we're going to take our last break. When we come back, it'll be time for the market update. This is Real Estate Talk on KGAL. Enjoy Christmas shopping. Shop downtown Corvallis. The most precious gift any time of year is a gift of jewelry. For over 35 years, the premier jewelry store in downtown Corvallis has been Gretz Jewelers. Here's owner Richard Gretz. The night before Christmas, the stockings were hung with care in hopes that soon the Richard Gretz Goldsmith's jewelry will be there. As always, very special. If not just right, we will exchange it or refund your money. An inexpensive gift can be a very special gift from Richard M. Gretz Goldsmiths, going strong and for many years to come. At 308 Southwest Madison. And take time to stop at the Old World Deli, a Corvallis tradition since 1977, with its European atmosphere and unique brick floor. Old World Deli features an esoteric menu with Corvallis' best sandwiches and entrees. A Corvallis chili champion, too. Come unwind at the Old World Deli, 341 Southwest 2nd. This Christmas, come shop and dine in downtown Corvallis. Never know how. Need a gift for a handyman this season? Stop into your local Napa Auto Parts store and pick up a gear wrench, seven-piece ratcheting wrench set and standard or metric on sale for just $29.99 or a crescent five-piece locking plier set on sale for just $26.99. Hurry into Napa, the handy place to get gifts for a handyman. Napa know how. You ever use a wrench set to make a snowman? It's kind of weird. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores, offer expires 12 31 12 while supplies last. This season at the Home Depot, Husky 65-piece mechanics tool sets are just $29.88. These tools are new, improved, and guaranteed forever. And they're even more affordable. So what you give the do-it-yourselfer on your list can be a little gift to your wallet, too. Because you gave the gift of doing with a Husky 65-piece mechanics tool set for just $29.88. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While supplies last, U.S. only. See store for details. 
Thomas Jefferson once said, never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. So get organized now by calling Queen Bee Organizing in Corvallis. Kristen Bertelson of Queen Bee Organizing knows that less clutter equals less stress. Many people struggle with multiple levels of disorganization of their homes and workplaces and often need outside help to put their lives in order. If you're distracted and overwhelmed for the holidays and you need to get organized, then call Queen Bee Organizing now, 541-231-6964. Or log on to queenbeeorganizing.com. That's queen, the letter B, organizing. It's a seasoned tradition known the world over. The Nutcracker. The whole family is invited to see The Nutcracker presented by the Legacy Ballet and the Russell Tripp Performance Center at the Lynn Benton Community College. December 13th, 14th, and 15th at 7 p.m. with a 2 p.m. matinee for the 15th. Tickets are $12 and are available online at lynnbenton.edu forward slash Russell Tripp Theater or at the door. Don't miss Albany's Legacy Ballet's The Nutcracker. It's a must for the season. If it happens overnight, Eric and Gary have it live during Red Eye Radio on Smart Talk 1580 KGAL. Welcome back to Real Estate Talk. I'm Dave Pouch of Remax Integrity. Uh, I wrapped up too soon. We have one more listener question that I wanted to talk about today, so I'm going to cover that really quick before we jump into the market update if I can. Here's from A&A in, all, in Lebanon. Uh, what is your opinion of multiple offers and how to handle them? Well, thanks, A and A. Uh, multiple offers tend to be a wonderful thing for sellers and a terrible thing for buyers. As an agent, I hate them either way. Now, you don't say if you're a buyer or a seller, so I'll try to touch base from both perspectives for you. From the seller's perspective, multiple offers are an indication that you have a product that is well-placed, well-priced, and that you are in the strongest possible negotiating position. It's good. Assuming that you're getting all offers within the window of time before you have accepted an offer, you can actually negotiate with each of these offers. Your agent's going to be communicating to the other agents that there are multiple offers and they should be providing their highest and best offers. That's even before the second and follow-on offers are written. Your agent should be letting them know. It's in your best interest and in the best interest of fairness to then go back to the first offer and tell them there are other offers in play. The typical way of doing this is to send out what is called a highest and best request. I've seen it done a number of ways, but I think the best way is to do a memorandum and not a counter offer. Because if you send out a counter offer, it's something that your buyer really can't accept. So send out a notice, a memorandum, uh, an addendum, if you will, to uh, notify everyone that multiple offers have been received and that everyone has until X date, that's date and time, to respond by addendum with their highest and best offer. If they don't wish to amend their offer, all they have to do is sign the memorandum, we're not changing, and send it back. Okay, it's that simple. Once the deadline passes, then the seller's agent presents all the offers and should go over them with you. Uh, make sure that you focus on the entire offer and not just the price. A full price FHA offer with 5000 in closing costs should be compared to a less than full price cash offer in terms of your specific needs as a seller. From the buyer's perspective, multiple offers are challenging. You're making a decision in a knowledge vacuum. You have to make the offer that's going to allow you to sleep that night regardless of the outcome tomorrow. The offer has to be, uh, you're not going to feel like you overpaid if you get it or that you would have paid more if you didn't. Now, one thing a buyer can do to make sure that they have the, the best terms and conditions in their offer. Think about closing date that the seller may need. Folks, ask the question. Home warranty, inspection period, your financing, all of those can be improved potentially to improve your offer. Finally, one thing I've seen some buyers do is to write a letter to accompany their offer. This isn't going to work with a bank owned or a HUD or a Fannie Mae Freddie Mac property, but a traditional seller, you may be able to provide an emotional appeal that might put your offer over the top if other offers are close. Say you're bidding on a two-bedroom, one-bath home, your competition's an investor who wants to turn it into a rental, you're looking to take the first step in the property ladder with you and your family. A nice letter telling the seller how much you love the home and how it's your start towards the future. You know, if the offers are close, the seller may decide with their heart rather than their wallet. So, all's fair, right? 
Okay, we got a couple of minutes left to finish up the market update. We'll begin in Corvallis, where inventory is down three from our previous report. Today, 127 active listings. The average asking price, $358,363. Lots of multiple offers going on in Corvallis, by the way. 114 homes sold in the last 90 days. That's down four. Currently, 3.34 months of inventory is available for sale. The median sold price in Corvallis over the past 90 days has ticked up a slice. Today, at $251,100, averaging $153.20 per square foot, and on average, homes spend 102 days on the market from listing to close of sale. In Lebanon, 78 homes are available for sale. That's up two. The median asking price is also up today at $159,000. In the last 90 days, 45 homes have sold in Lebanon. That's up four from the last report. And the median sold price is steady today at $110,000. $85.86 per square foot is the average and 143 days on market, also the average. Today, 5.2 months of inventory is available. Finally, to Albany, where inventory has dropped two with 244 active residential listings. The average asking price is down slightly at $187,534. 163 homes have sold in the last three months. That is up three. The median sale price is down just a hair today at $167,450. Homes are spending an average, those that sell, of 132 days on the market for listing to close of sale. And the average dollar per square foot value in Albany is down slightly at $107.94. Today, there is 4.49 months of inventory available to you. And that's the market update for this sixth day of December 2012. If you are thinking about buying a home, if you are at the beginning of the home buying process, there are some really good steps that you can take. Getting pre-approved with a lender that you like, finding a real estate professional that you like and trust, but also taking a class, investing eight hours of your time into the Willamette Neighborhood Housing Services Home Buyer Education Program. They do a great job making sure buyers are educated about what they're going to face. That education actually translates to potential loan programs, down payment assistance programs, uh, and other things that can help you build up your down payment and be even more ready. It makes you eligible for the VITA program, for example. Uh, so totally worth the time. It's an important issue to me that you have the resources in this real estate market to help you make good decisions. Willamette Neighborhood Housing Services is a tremendous resource. If you are a buyer starting the home buying process, please contact them at www.w-nhs.org and take the class. It is worth it. Now, my commitment is for you Listeners to this radio show, if you're not currently working with another agent and you want to take this class, just email me. The email address is realestatetalk at kgal.com. Let me know the date that you want to sign up for. Uh, I think they are teaching them right now. The, the rotation appears to be uh, one, one a month. One in Corvallis, one in Albany, one in Corvallis, one in Albany. They also have a night class. They're typically Saturday eight hours, but they do have an evening class that stretches over, I think, three or four days. Let me know the date that you've signed up for. When you take the class, I will pay the $45 tuition fee for you. I am happy to do that for my clients, and I will offer that to you, the faithful listeners of Real Estate Talk. And again, all you got to do, email me at realestatetalk at kgal.com. If you have a question for the show, as you can see by today's show, we answer listener questions right here on the air. The best way to get them, send me an email, realestatetalk at kgal.com. But you can also go to that Facebook fan page and post them there. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, We'll answer them there. We can get a discussion going right there on the Facebook page and see if we can get some other people to chime in, too. But regardless, every Saturday morning, you can find us right here on KGAL, 10.06 a.m. launch time over at 11 o'clock, a couple of Thursdays a month, and the Valley Talk time slot at 11. We are always talking about real estate, the issues that I hope are important to you, and giving you the best information that we can to help you make good decisions. I'm Dave Pouch of REMAX Integrity. I will see you next week here on Real Estate Talk, 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, and Corvallis.
your first choice in local news, sports, and smart talk. This is News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.